Hey everybody, it's Scott Venneclaus here over at Treadstone Mortgage. Okay, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Bear with me, it's gonna be a little bit longer video, but I promise it's gonna be some really good information. I wanna talk a little bit about what the market's doing, inflation, and of course, the talk of the town, higher interest rates. Now first, for those of you who don't know me, again, my name is Scott. I've been in the business for 20, 21 years. Local guy, born and raised, local company right here at Treadstone. So, so let's jump into our DeLoreans. Okay, guys, I don't want to age myself, but we'll jump in. We're, we'll rewind a little bit, go in the past. We're going to go pre-COVID, 2019, 2020. Um, rates were hanging in that five, five and a half percent range. Inventory was pretty strong. The market was pretty good. And then, of course, we all woke up. We heard about this COVID thing that happened, which obviously was a terrible thing for everybody. Um, and what happened at that point is we saw the shutdown. Now, when we saw the shutdown, guys, it really slowed the economy down. People were losing their jobs. They weren't spending any money. Restaurants, of course, were majorly impacted. So what happened at that point is it had a big build of supply and demand. There was a lot of demand still out there, but low supply that was happening. So what needed to be done was the feds came out and said, okay, we have to lower these interest rates. We have got to get people to start spending some money during the shutdown. And they did. We saw interest rates go down at one point as low as 2% on a 30 year fix, which was just unbelievable. Out of my 20 plus years, I never would expect that to happen. But what that did everyone is it increased people to spend too much money. So as we were going through the COVID, the shutdown, people were spending money on real estate, uh, we saw auto loans going up. People were spending money on credit cards. It was cheap, guys. It was really good out there uh, when it comes to uh, uh, money coming in, money going out for the majority of people. At that time, what happened is, is we kind of got into the spot that we're at right now, which is high inflation, okay? We were coming off of appraisal gaps, higher list prices, no contingency offers. Um, and it really, really started driving out specifically real estate values. Now that's continuing to happen, but the acceleration of the values going up has started to balance down a little bit better. And then what's happened from there is when you have inflation like now, which is um, uh, obviously the cost of, of goods going up right now, the supply and demand, the Federal Reserve's now say, okay, now we gotta kick this back and we gotta stop people from spending money. And that's why we've seen these interest rates go up specifically this year. This is the most aggressive that the Federal Reserves have been since 1994 when it comes to increasing rates. Now, new inflation numbers came out yesterday and they're still over 8%. A lot of people say that you have to have the rate over the actual inflation to stop inflation from going up. So we could potentially be seeing guys seven, I don't wanna say the word eight yet, but I don't wanna rule it out quite yet. Um, at the end of the day, we're going to keep seeing these rates go up until we finally start seeing uh, less spending that's going out there. The feds want inflation close to 2%. Again, guys, we're close to over 8% right now. So we got a long way to go at that point. But what's it, what it's done to us is it's kind of given us a market correction, right? We're seeing inventory slightly up on real estate. Uh, mortgage applications are actually down 22%. So there's a little bit less buyers that are in the market right now but we're also seeing contingent offers getting accepted. We're seeing government loans getting accepted. So this is weird to say, and I know a lot of people uh, will uh, kind of feel weird hearing this, but interest rates going up can actually be a really good thing. And I'm actually happy that it's starting to happen because it is opening up more opportunities for home buyers that are out there. And it's giving us that market correction that we really needed. Again, I still think values of homes are gonna continue to go up, just not as rapid as what we've seen this last 12 to 24 months. So interest rates going up, guys, don't let it worry you too much. Again, it's just part of the market. You never buy, you never sell because of rates. You buy because it's the right time for you and the family. Everything uh, else is gonna be part of the environment that you're in when you're ready for that shot. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about some buyer advantages to higher interest rates. Again, you've got less competition, you have contingent offers getting accepted, that means you can uh, buy a house and, uh, and say, hey, buy or seller, I'm gonna buy your house, but I need to sell my house first, so that's gonna be an option that's available now. We're seeing more inventory, less appraisal gaps, so again, lots of uh, opportunities that are out there. Now, I'm gonna talk about a great option as well too, which is called a 2-1 buy-down, and this is gonna help consumers actually manually lower the interest rate 
to be able to get you and still real estate, but take advantage of a little bit lower interest rates that uh, are, are gonna be possibly available to you. So we're gonna talk about that here shortly. Now for sellers, what we're seeing here with inflation and with uh, interest rates going up, is you're probably seeing and, and feeling a little bit as a seller is your house is on the market a little bit longer. You uh, have to accept, you know, no appraisal gaps, things like that. But again, there's still healthy competition out there with a lot of buyers. So still a great, great time to be able to sell some real estate right now, but it's starting to balance a little bit that's out there. Now, the two one buy down that I was just talking about, this is gonna be a benefit for sellers as well too. Again, we're gonna slingshot back to this here shortly. Um, this is gonna help out with any pending deals as well too. So if you're having any issues selling your current house, instead of doing a price reduction, let's talk about this two one buy down here shortly as well too. So, um, okay, so let's talk two one buy down now, guys. I hope that made sense a little bit about what the market did, where it's going, why it did what it did. I think that's a good thing for us to kind of understand. But here's a way that we can fight a little bit these increasing interest rates. Now, as a buyer, there's a couple different options. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons here. Now, two one buy down. What this does, everyone, it allows you to spend a certain percentage up front as a closing cost as a buyer, and you can actually manually lower your interest rate. Now, for an example, if you did a 6% rate, let's say that, 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 that is what the market rate is at, and you did a 2-1 buy down, the first year, you can have that rate of 4%, okay? This lowers that payment $368 on a $300,000 sales price house. The second year, that 4% goes up 1% to 5%, still about uh, good savings on there. And then finally in the third year, it'll stay fixed on that rate of 6% from year three to year 30 right there. So it's a great way for a temporary uh, decrease in your interest rate um, to help you be able to get in that house. Now, let's talk some pros and cons on this, guys, okay? Now, the pro, of course, is that you're gonna be able to get a lower interest rate right off the bat may help you be able to afford a little bit higher price home in the beginning and then maybe do a refinance in the future as we all do anticipate rates to go lower. Uh, so potentially be able to have that on there. Now, <clears throat> the, the con guys, the part that I don't like about it a little bit, and I'll be honest with you, is that most people, guilty as charged sometimes, when we have that savings, we don't tend to keep that savings in, in our budget. And a lot of times American families will take that savings of 368 and they'll find somewhere else to be able to spend that money, auto loan, more credit cards. And then what happens is, is one, two years later, your payment goes up and then you might not, not be in the situation that you wanna be in. So that's one of the cons that I don't like about the program, but everyone has different um, uh, needs for their family. So we'll definitely wanna talk those through with each other. On the flip side, there is an option that I actually like even better than two one buy down, which is just doing a straight buy down of your interest rate. Now you may not be able to go as low as 4% or 2% total um, doing this, but it's a way for a consumer to be able to spend a little bit of more money up front with closing costs and reduce their interest rate and keep it like that for 30 year fix. So there's some great options guys at the end of the day for buyers to be able to still buy a house in today's market and still capitalize off of very attractive low interest rates. So give me a call, of course, we wanna talk that through. Now, as a seller, what this does for you is it allows you to offer incentives to buyers. So again, as you're seeing a little bit less buyers that are out there, we're starting to see some price reductions. Instead of having to do a price reduction, um, offer that buyer that you'll pay some of their closing costs and prepaids. What this does is it gives that buyer a little bit more incentive to purchase your house because for an example, if you were to do a $10,000 less price reduction, it's only about a $70 difference with your mortgage payment for that buyer. It doesn't change their financial factor too much. But if the seller were to say, hey, we'll pay nine, $10,000 of your closing costs and prepaids, the lender now can use that to manually buy down the buyer's interest rate, reduce that and save them now two to $300 on that monthly mortgage payment. So don't always do the price reduction. It may not be the best bet for you as a seller or the buyer, believe it or not. So guys, there's so many great options that are still out there for buyers, for sellers. Just make sure you're connected with the right professionals to be able to explore these options with you. I'd love to be that professional for you. Give me a call. I'd love to help you out anytime.